one of the most important relationships between sets is that of containment. Uh, so we're going to let x and y be sets. And if every element of x is also an element of y, then we say that x is a subset of the set y. And if that's true, we write x is a subset of y. So here's a couple of examples. We're going to have x be the set a, b, c. We're going to have y be the set a, b. We'll have z be the set c. And so since every element of y is also an element of x, we can say that y is a subset of x. Since every element of z is a subset of x, we can also say that z is a subset of x. Notice that every element of y is not an element of z, and vice versa. So y and z are not subsets of each other. The empty set, which is denoted with a circle with a line through it, so make sure you're not writing your zeros this way, this is not a zero, is the set that has no elements. A surprising fact about the empty set is that it's actually a subset of every set x. Here's an idea as to why. Let's kind of go back to the last example. Right? We said that the set z is not a subset of the set y. We have the set z containing the element c. And we have the set y containing the element a, b. And so the reason that we say that z is not a subset of y is because this element is not a member of y. All right, well, if I take the empty set, which contains no elements, and ask whether it's a subset of any set X, I need to point to an element that's in the empty set, but not X for this relationship to not hold. And since we can't find any elements in the empty set, we have to conclude that the empty set is a subset of X. And that's true for any set X. All right, so that means that any non-empty set is gonna have at least two subsets itself in the empty set itself because any element of x is also an element of x. And so we can define a new set based on a set x and its subsets. If x is a set, its power set, curly p of x, is the set of all subsets of x. Uh, and so that we can avoid the use of the word set twice in a row, we actually like to call these collections or families instead. The power set of x is the set of all sets E that are subsets of X. That's how you read that. All right, let's see an example. Let's let X be the set ABC. And therefore the power set of X is going to start with the empty set because the empty set is a subset of every set. It's going to also include A because the set containing A is a subset of the set ABC. It's gonna have all of my one element sets, so also B and C. Then I could take two elements from X, so I could have AB, AC, and BC. And then I could take all three elements from X, so that would just be the set X itself. So there's the empty set, there's itself, and everything in between. Notice that if the cardinality of X is equal to N, then the cardinality of the power set is going to be equal to 2 to the N. So remember, cardinality is the number of elements in the set. So in the above example, we had that the cardinality of X was 3. So the cardinality of X was equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 which is two to the third power.